So just before we do get started, I do want to thank you guys on 2,500 subscribers. This is incredible and it would not happen without each and every single one of you. We just reached over 120,000 views on this page and again, I cannot thank you guys enough for the love and support that you guys have shown. So. With that being said, we are gonna start making sweaters and hats for the Roddy channel. They are gonna have the three Rottweilers on the front of them, maybe one of each on each sweater, but they are gonna say the Roddy channel right on the back of them, and they are gonna have a small logo on them. So if you're interested in those, please reach out to me at the Roddy channel on Instagram and let me know you'd like to be a part of the pre-order and we will get you in on that first order. So let's dive into today's video. So I want to start off with appearance of male and female Rottweilers. So as far as coloration goes, you're really not going to get much difference in there. Black and brown is the Rottweiler. They've got their spots above their eyes. They've got the brown around their face, the brown on their chest, brown on their legs up to their elbows. And then they do have that little brown heart around their booty. So the only real difference that you're going to see in a purebred Rottweiler is going to be that tail, the dock tail versus the long tail. And then whether you get an American breed or a German breed, you're going to have a short, more rounded face or a more squared, longer face. So that's really all for appearance goes besides height and weight. So height and weight, you're going to be about two to four inches taller on a male. And then you are going to be on a female, you're going to be about 80 to 100, 105 pounds. And then a male, you're going to be about 85 to 135 pounds. So for as far as appearance goes, that's really everything. Let's talk about a little bit of temperament. So I do have some notes here that I took because I could ramble on and on for days about these dogs. But Let's just talk about a few things that I've thought about over the last couple days uh, since you guys have requested this video. This is from your guys' comments. I do try and read every single one and reply as often and as diligently as I can. So if you guys have any comments, be sure to drop them down below and I will reply as fast as I can. So let's go ahead and talk about temperament. Males typically mature slower than females. Now. I don't think you ever really get a fully matured male. I think they kind of stay in the puppy stage forever. Now, after two years old, it's a lot better, but they still stay that goofy, you know, playful puppy that they always once were. Males typically, or females typically tend to get that more of a uh, motherly instinct. They start to be better around kids. They're not quite as energetic. They do tend to uh, not need people quite as much. They'll kind of lay off and do their own thing. Like males will need more attention. And females, as they love attention, they're still fine being by themselves as well. So males mature way slower than females. Now, males are a little harder to train because they are so easily distracted, okay? They want to be confident. They want to be curious. They want to find everything before you do. So if somebody comes and knocks at the door, my two males will run straight down the stairs and outside and they'll see who's here. Keto will stay right by me and she will stay, you know, alert and confident, but she stays closer to me. So I think that goes, uh, ties into a little bit of the next thing that I want to talk about. Males are more territorial and females are more uh, people territorial. Like you've got, you've got the, the male's going to protect the house and the female's going to protect people in the house. Now the male will protect people as well, but they tend to stick to more of a territorial dominance versus the female who is, you know, protecting people. So that ties into, let's talk about males have a higher desire to please people and females more to protect people. So when playing fetch and stuff, my males will always go chase the ball and they want to bring it back because they know that's what I'm doing. The female will stay between me and the ball and watch what they're doing. She's more observant, more uh, more docile behavior. Males are easier to socialize than females. The problem with this is, if not socialized properly, the males are also likely to be more aggressive and territorial. So the female, when we, you know, a female when we go out and we're walking and we meet, Kita's going to stay closer to me and tighter to me. Fluffy's going to go out and find the dog. She's going to go make sure that the dog is not a threat to us or people even. So a lot of that responsibility lies on you as an owner to make sure that when people are walking up to you and dogs are walking up to you, you're keeping those dogs and your dogs closer to you so that the dogs know, hey, this is not an enemy. This is a friend. Okay, They're keeping me close. They're talking to them as they walk up. They're introducing themselves. I don't have anything to worry about here. So that, that goes a little bit to uh, 
um, socialization of the dogs, the female is definitely not going to get as, as, uh, to stranger dogs, the female's not going to get along as well with random dogs. The male can get more aggressive with random dogs if not proper, properly socialized. Another thing about the male versus the female is the male is going to be more needy in attention, okay? Kita never really wants to sit on my lap while the other dogs will literally climb on my lap. If I am brushing them, they're going to put their paw up and they're going to try and pet me. Kita doesn't really do that. She does love her attention and she loves cuddles and she loves pets and she is a daddy's girl. But if I'm laying in bed, the other dogs are like kind of upset with me if I'm not giving them attention. Like they'll keep nudging at me and they'll keep trying to, you know, put their paw on me and try and pet me. Kita is completely fine with laying on a bed in the corner of the room by herself. So males need more attention than the females do, in my opinion. Now, with being more curious, if you're off-leashing your dog, the males are going to be more curious. They're more likely to run around. They're more likely to keep a farther distance from you because they want to make sure that the territory is protected. Now, the female is going to make sure that you're protected, and she's going to typically stay a little bit closer to you, and she's going to observe you and make sure that you're protected the whole time. Being around kids, okay? Now, I know you've all heard of motherly instincts. Females are typically better around smaller kids. They're not quite as goofy. They're not quite as playful. They don't get excited as easily. And they typically have that motherly instinct to where they are calm around kids and they're more observant. They're watching the children instead of trying to play with the children. Now, when we have nephews and nieces over here, the males will try and like keep the kids together. They like trying to herd them together. They'll kind of push them and nudge them to get together. Kita will sit back and watch them all or lay in between them and make sure that they're all, you know, doing their own thing, but making sure that they're protected. So those motherly instincts do kick in in the female, and I think that they are better around children. Now, as far as family dogs go, males will typically bond with anyone and everyone in the family that shows them attention. They do pick that one alpha person in the pack. So for me, where I am the only male in the house, Fluffy and Kenai know that I am the dog dad. I am their alpha, I am their pack leader, and they definitely make sure that everybody knows that. But they do get along well with everyone in the house. Now, if I have someone over, Kita's not going to be friendly with everyone. Sometimes she doesn't want to even cuddle. She doesn't even want to be pet by other people. And that just goes to her observant behavior and she's, you know, skeptical of some people. I think females are more typically pick certain people in a family and protect those people a little bit stronger. And then males will protect the whole family and the territory that they are on. Um, males will get bored easier. So males can be way more destructive than females. Males will also tend to mark stuff in the house, so that can be considered destructive as well. But Kita can lay in the house bored all day, while Fluffy, he gets bored laying down. He wants to get up. He wants to play. If any time my three dogs are playing, it's going to mostly be Kenai and Fluffy playing, and then Kita kind of stays back and watches a little. If it gets really rough, she'll jump in and start to play as well. But she typically has no problem laying back and being lazy and relaxing with me for a day when the other dogs want to play, they want to chew on stuff, they want to play tug of war, they want to go play fetch. Kita typically doesn't want to do that. Now let's talk a little bit about heat cycles and non-neutered and non-spayed dogs. So for Kita, she is spayed now. She did have two litters before. Before she, when she would have her heat cycle, so your first heat cycle is going to come around about eight months to a year, and it's going to last for one to two weeks. So they are going to bleed a little bit in the house. Now each dog is going to be different on how they, their, how their body reacts to this heat cycle. So we would put boxers on Kita, and we would slide them up over her booty, and we would put the pin up at top, and we would put an elastic around it, and we would tie it off. So typically, she wouldn't just be able to walk around the house and bleed everywhere. She was set up for success and not destroying the house or leaving blood everywhere. But one thing that you need to remember is if you have a non-neutered male and a female in the house, they need to be kept separate unless you want to get pregnant. There is nothing that will stop a male dog and a, or a non-neutered male dog and a non-spayed female from tying together and getting pregnant. They have to be kept separate, whether that be they need to leave and go stay with your parent or a friend or something for the week. 
please, please, please do not think that you can keep them apart from each other. The second you fall asleep, the second you leave the room, they're going to tie together and that dog is going to get pregnant. And if that's not something you're looking for, or if your female dog is not ready for that, then it can cause serious health issues. Now, as far as males go, they don't really have a heat cycle. As far as non-neutered males go, typical problems that you have with them is territory marking, other males being around and them going up and marking wherever they pee. Uh, you know, thinking that they have to portray that dominance on every other dog. They will hump more often. They will mount more often. They will, you know, mark territorial like we spoke about. But as far as a heat cycle goes, there's nothing really that I know of that a male does. Now, if there is a non-neutered dog in your household and within a mile radius, you have a female that is in heat, they can smell it and they will start to misbehave like in nobody's business. They won't listen to you. They'll start to breathe really heavily. They're gonna start to stay outside. They're trying to get as close to that female as possible, okay? They are unleashed animals when, unleashed animals when there is a female in heat that they can smell. They start to misbehave. They start to become, you know, just, just buttholes. Like, you cannot stop a dog that wants to mount another dog. It is it's annoying, but also incredible the drive that they have when, when they can smell that. But as far as heat cycles goes, there's really nothing for a male. All right, so I'm not gonna ramble on too long today about this video. If you guys have more questions, please drop them down in the comments below. But you guys need to decide which one works for you, a male or a female, okay? In my opinion, the male is going to be a more of a man's best friend. They're gonna wanna play all the time. They need to get that exercise out and they're really just gonna be territorial dogs. The female is gonna be more to one person and they are still gonna be your best friend, but they're not gonna need you quite as much as a male dog. So if you guys have any questions for today's video, please drop them down in the comments below. Don't forget if you are interested in some apparel, a sweater or a hat, drop me a message on Instagram right here at this link. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to turn on that bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. And please, if you like today's video, drop a like on it. We will see you next time. Peace.